Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. For a little while now, I've been wanting to make this multifunction bag. I want it to serve as either a crossbody bag, a wasted bag, like a bum bag type of thing. And as a viewer had recently requested, something to go through the belt loops on your jeans. It's also going to be really useful for when you're taking your dog for a walk. We've got a compartment for the poo bags. Then we've got a compartment for treats and we'll also have a section for the mobile phone or you know your earbuds things like that that you might want to keep in your bag so it's got quite a lot of room in there stick around and i'll show you how to make this multi-function bag all right this is everything that we need to make this bag all of the fabric that i'm using here today is quilting cotton and i'm going to be using continuous zips you can use regular zips as well for the back of the bag we need one piece of fabric that is 10 inches by 6 inches. You want to have a pallon or some kind of stabilizer on the back of that. So that's been fused on. And for the lining of the bag, we need two pieces that are 10 inches by 6 inches. We don't need to stabilize those. For the lining of the front pocket, we want 10 inches by 6 inches but we do want just a lightweight fusible interfacing on that. So I just use a lightweight cotton interface rather than the lightweight pallon. And it really doesn't matter. It just makes it a little bit easier to go through the presser foot on your machine. For the front pocket of the bag, we want 10 inches by four and a half inches. And for the top section at the front of the bag, we want two strips that are two and a half inches by 10 inches. One of the strips will have pallon on it, the other one won't. And with the front pocket of the bag, you'll also need to stabilize that. So the 10 by four and a half inch for the front needs a pallon and so does the two inch on just one of them. Then we have two zips. We're going to have a zip down low and then one at the very top. They're nine inches long. And if you're using a regular zip, you will be able to cut those down. We've got some toilet bags for the dog. You've got four tabs here. These are just to put on the end of the zip. So we want four tabs that are at least the width of your zip and at least two and a half inches long. And preferably we would have three zipper pulls. Again, if you're just using a regular zip, we can get away with just using one pull on each tape, but I will explain that shortly. We want two swivel clips. I'm using a one inch swivel clip. For the loop for the poo bags to go through, I'm using a nine millimeter eyelet, which is equivalent to three eighths of an inch. You can use one that's bigger as well. It's actually up to you what size you want to use in your eyelets. Use what you've got. Uh, two D rings, which are one inch, and then we have a slider, which is also one inch. The last thing we need is some fabric for our handle. I've cut a piece of fabric that is 70 inches long by three and a half inches wide. I folded that in half and I folded that in half again so that I can close up the raw edges on my handle. What I have done with this fabric, because I'm using cotton, is stabilized it. You can use a pallon if you want to. Uh, it's a little bit too thick for me. I've used here a waistband interfacing. I use this most of the time in dressmaking. So I'm going to use that inside here. So just any old interfacing along the entire length of your fabric. This is good because it actually has the little folds in the center and it actually does make it easier to fold the fabric together. So you want at least 60 to 70 inches of fabric for your handles at three and a half inches wide. And we need some tabs for the side of our bag as well so that we can put our swivel clips on. We'll take that from the fabric on the handles. If you don't want to make your own handles, which generally I don't, I like to use a one inch wide strapping. It's a really good quality, very strong strapping. Uh, so if you want to use that instead, have about 60 to 70 inches handy. And you can also use that for the uh, tabs for your swivels. The other piece I forgot to mention is that you will also need a 10 inch by four and a half inch piece of fabric for the back of this front section here. I think that's about it. Now we can start constructing. Set everything aside for the time being. What we're going to do first is 
assemble the zip and one of our zips just needs one slider so I'll pop that on if you're using a regular zip that's fine you don't have to do anything here just um, I'll just do this quickly so I've placed my slider in the middle there and with the other one I'm going to pop two slides on and I'm just going to bring one down this end here I don't want to have my sliders too close together and you'll see why shortly pop the other one on in the same direction okay so I've got two sliders on here both of the curved edges are facing the same direction and I've got one on this one now as I said if you don't have access to continuous zips it's fine to use a zip that's only got one slider grab your little two and a half inch tabs and fold it in half right side together place the right sides over the end of your zip fold that down clip it in place and do the same for the other end so it's really important to remember to make sure you've actually put your sliders on before you do this step I've been caught out many times I've got tabs on each end I'll do this one as well and then we'll take this to the machine and we're just going to stitch a quarter of an inch down either side when you get to the section where the teeth are I do like to triple stitch over that we have our 10 inch by four and a half inch piece and we'll need the lining section for that as well and we have the zip that has the two sliders on it before we do anything it's important just to note that if you're using the technique with two sliders on it you don't want the two sliders to come together and meet if you do that then you'll end up separating the teeth in between it and the whole bag will just open out which is not what we want for this particular project keep the sliders away from each other and we will close this section up shortly our aim is to have two separate sections at the front one will be for the poo bags and the other section will be for the puppy treats and we'll stitch that closed on the pocket so we'll also need to stitch that closed on the zipper section so we will actually stitch the section of the zip closed shortly but first of all we're going to insert the zip onto our fabric so we've got our sliders with the curved edge that's facing our left so both of them will have the curved edge pointing to our left I've marked the center of the zip center of the fabric and we'll also mark the center of the other four and a half inch piece of fabric and we'll place all of those layers together have your zip face down line up the center and line up the center of your lining piece as well and you can clip it all together now you know I like to use double-sided tape most of the time I just thought I would actually do things the old-fashioned way today okay now it doesn't matter that the zipper tabs are sticking out at the end we can trim that off later we did actually allow excess fabric for that now when we go to the machine we're going to stitch straight down that long edge and then we're going to come back and top stitch when we top stitch we're going to start where the zip and the fabric meet so we'll top stitch from here up to this section just here and we'll leave the rest of it unstitched when you're putting the zip on and you come to the bulk of the zip and you need to move the slider out of the way move it in the direction of the end of your tabs rather than toward the center we just want to keep these sliders away from each other ignore that advice if you're only using one slide let's put this zip in when you come up to the section where the slider is I'm going to take the top one and push that all the way to the top edge and then I'll continue to sew until I get to the next one now the one down this end is in my way so I'm going to bring that toward myself just for the time being and when I get to the point where it's in my way again I'll push the slider just past the foot I don't want it to go too far to the back I'll start sewing where the tab meets the end of the zip and I'll finish where the tab and zipper meet 
Okay, we've got the bottom section of the bag in place and now we need to do the top section. Take the 10 inch by two and a half inch piece and we'll place that over the top here, lining up the center again and grab the other one as well. So we've got two pieces. One has the pallet on it and the other one doesn't. Place that on this side. With all those layers together, we can take that back to the machine, stitch down there, and then open it out and we'll do a top stitch the same way. So top stitch just in between the zipper tabs. With the top section of our zipper piece, I'm going to do the same as I did before. When I move my slider, I'll be moving my slider toward the outside edges of the bag. So I've got a slider here. I'll just move that to the back and continue on. And I've got the slider at the end here. I'm just going to move it just past the foot. And we'll top stitch the same as before, just inside the zipper area. Okay, we've got our top section and our bottom section all in place now. You can trim off the excess from the zipper tab if you want to. Just remember to keep your sliders apart for the time being. This piece of fabric is a little bit too big for the main body of the bag that we've got here. We want to trim this section down to be the same size as the back section of our bag, which is 10 inches by six inches. It's up to you whether you want to take it off the top or off the bottom here or even if you just want to do a little bit off each side which is what I will do because I want to try and keep as much of this Hello Kitty fabric as I can but I also don't want this top section to be too narrow. I'm going to trim off just a quarter of an inch from the bottom here which will also just help. And I'll make a mark on the fabric here at both sides measuring six inches from the bottom. I'm just going to trim off that top section. So I've trimmed this down to 10 inches by six inches. Now we want to mark the section where we're going to separate the front of our bag for doggy treats and for the poo bags. Doesn't matter whether you put your eyelet on the left or the right, but if you're only using one slider, then I would recommend you putting it on the right hand side. Measure four inches in from the right. Once you've marked this line in, the next thing we're going to do is make a mark for our little eyelet. I'm going to have an eyelet here where the plastic of the poo bags will come out and you can just pull them off. If you don't have access to eyelets, then make yourself a buttonhole. So you just take this to the machine and mark a buttonhole that's about 20 to 25 millimeters or three quarters of an inch to an inch. So if you've got a buttonhole feature on your machine, just go and make yourself a buttonhole. It's the easiest thing to do. If you have these little eyelets, then we're going to place an eyelet on this section. From this drawn line that we've got here at four inches, we're going to come in one and a half inches and two inches down from the top. So from the top stitching line here, we'll come down two inches. From that drawn line here, we'll come in one and a half inches. There's my little dot there, and that will be the position of my eyelet two inches down and one and a half inches in. If you're doing your buttonhole, then do that in the same position. We now need to put a hole in our fabric. So you can just pinch the fabric together, make a small nick in the fabric there. This is if you don't have a punch and my punch is blunt and I've given it to Chris to go and sharpen. He hasn't brought it back to me yet. I'm sure it'll come as soon as I've made this hole. So I've just got a little cross in the fabric there. I'll make a little tiny hole through all the layers of the fabric. So I've got the fabric with a pallet and the back part of it. So when you've got a hole big enough for the eyelet, I'll grab my eyelet punch tool thingamajig. So the hat side goes through from the right side and you'll place that face down on your press and then just take that little washer and place that on top of the fabric and press down. So our eyelet's in place now and we can get on with the next part. Take the piece of fabric that is 10 by six inches 
and it's got interfacing on the back of it. Place that right side up, take this fabric here and put all the layers together and just make sure that that's right side up. Now if you want to you can go and secure the top edge and even a little bit on the sides and the bottom. It's not necessary if it makes it easier for you you can go ahead and do that. We also need to stitch straight along this drawn line here so I'll go and do that twice because it will be a stress point when you're going in and out with your little treats and I'll change my thread and I'll go and stitch this zipper section closed as well. So I'll use a black thread and I'll just stitch that a couple of times. I just want to go over the teeth a few times and from here down I'll go down and then back up again. Before you stitch this top section down just make sure that you've got this lining section facing up rather than away. Okay so the zip section here has been closed off and this section here is also closed and I've also gone and just stitched around the edges here just so that nothing flips back and I end up stitching it incorrectly later. Now the fabric for the handles I'm going to take straight to the machine and stitch down both long edges and I'm just going to take this straight to the machine and do that now. So the handle's been stitched all the way down. I want to take two pieces off the end here for my tabs. I'm just going to go and cut off two and a half inches and I'll set the handle aside for the time being. Now I mentioned earlier if you've only got the one slider don't close this section up here. We only want to close this and if you're going to use this as a treat and puppy poo bag holder then having the eyelet on the right hand side means that when you open your bag out with a single zip then it'll open all the way out. You can pop your bag refills in here whenever you need to but if you're going in and out for treats you only have to open up the zip halfway. So even though you might only have the one slider you'll still be able to make exactly the same bag you just don't need to open the zip all the way. You'll pop your treats in on this side, open your zip as much as that and you can stick your hand in. It's not going to affect the use of this side at all. So if you only have the one slider that's what you can do. If you have two then it does make it a little bit cool to have two separate pockets within the same tape. Now we can take our other zip. We're going to place that along the top here. I've notched out the center of the zip and of the fabric here, also the back of our bag and I've also marked a notch out of the lining sections as well out of both of those. Place the zip in the same direction as this zip here so we've got the curved edge of our slide heading toward our left and we'll match that up with this one. Line up the zip along the edge, we'll take one of the lining pieces and we'll place that right side down, clip it in place. We can go to the machine and sew the zip down and then we will open it out and we will do a top stitch along the edge there. Again we will do that in between the area where the zip is. This slider you can move anywhere you like and just like before we're going to start and stop at the end of the zip not at the end of the tab. We can take the back fabric now and place that over the top of this section here. Place the fabric right in the center there. Take the other lining piece and we'll put that right side together, match up the notches and clip it all together and we can take it to the machine as well. I'm going to sew the zip down and then top stitch. Okay there's not that much left to do at all so we've got our lining here, our main. Now we can take our swivels and the tabs that we cut off the handle earlier. Grab your swivel clip and place the open section of your tab on this blue section here and we'll repeat that for the other swivel and we'll stitch those down just on the very edge. When you're sewing the tabs on just make sure that you move your lining out of the way so you don't want this lining to be stitched down with the tabs. Okay we've got our swivels in place, both zips are in place, this has been stitched down 
over the zip as well as the bag and I forgot to show you earlier this zip now will not go any further across it'll be right for you just to pop a little roll of bags inside here and then close it up likewise on this side this zip's not going to go any further than that stitching line there you can pop your treats in and get them in and out as you need them we're going to have boxed corners on this bag and I'm only going to have a very small boxing because I don't need to have much width inside the bag I'm going to cut out a three quarter inch corner so if you just measure three quarters of an inch on the side so take your measuring gauge and mark three quarters of an inch along there from both sides so each end here and on the other side as well and we can cut those layers out I've kept the lining and the main layers together and I'll just cut those out at the same time okay very important here to remember that this zip here needs to be open at least part of the way uh, you don't have to go all the way because you want to be comfortable when you're sewing the sides very important to make sure your zip is open here every single time I start a project I forget and I'll remind you over and over again because I do this to myself all the time Now I've got all the layers spread out so I've got my lining opened out the main fabric opened out and I've measured three quarters of an inch in on each of the corners and cut all the layers out all together to finish up this bag we need to bring the two outer fabrics together so we can separate the lining and line that up starting with the side where the zipper is so just make sure the folds of your fabric are lined up nicely there and you have the lining fabric out of the way and then you can line all of that up and we can sew it down keep your clips on the inside otherwise you'll end up damaging your needle or your machine and with the lining line up the corners there we'll leave an opening of about three inches in the bottom section sew up the sides sew up the sides here and all the way along the top wherever I have bulky bits I'm going to triple stitch so the section where the front and the back meet there's a lot of bulk there I'll triple stitch there I'll also triple stitch where the swivel clips are and where that zipper is on the lower section now before you start have you checked that you've left the zipper open on the top of your bag I get caught out every single time okay all of the edges are done the last thing we need to do on the bag is box the corners pull the fabric away and line up the side seams so that one seam goes in one direction and the other one goes in the opposite direction it helps distribute the bulk more evenly it also helps the alignment so when you're clipping this together if you've got this seam here facing the left then make sure you've got this seam here facing the left as well it helps line up everything else if you do everything the same okay we'll go back to the machine triple stitch on the outer edges of the fat bag and we'll just do a single stitch on the lining pieces okay let's see how this has turned out remember I said to you earlier that we need to keep our zip open well guess what I've done I've actually left it closed again because I was talking to you guys earlier and and uh, I ended up closing up the zip every time I make something this is what I do you'd think I'd learn poke out all your corners on the outside of your bag and when you're happy with all of that then you can take your lining and close that up all I do with the lining is just take the seam line there pinch the fabric out and fold the edges under and then I'll just stitch straight across okay we'll set the bag aside for the time being we can take our handle fabric thread that through the slider here fold up one edge and we'll stitch that closed so we'll fold that up so that there's enough room to allow us to get in there with our machine foot and secure that 
So I'll just go and do a box on there. Okay, that has been secured here. Grab a D-ring, thread your handle through the D-ring, come back up to where the slide is and feed the handle through to the other side and just feed it through. Make sure you've got everything facing the right way. So you want to have this area that we've just stitched with the seam on the inside of the layers of fabric. Then that way it's nicely hidden. Grab the other D-ring, place your fabric through there. And again, just double check the orientation of your fabric. I'll fold that raw edge under and I'll take that to the machine and sew a box around that. Before I do, I just want to make sure that the layers are all in the correct orientation. So that looks good. I've got the D-rings on the handle. We'll just clip that onto our lobster clasp. And here we have our finished bag. We've got a little section just on this side here for our doggy treats. And on this side here, we've got the section where we can put our roll of bags and a handy little dispenser just there as well. And on the other side here, we've got a huge section where you can keep your mobile phone. This one here, it's seven inches long by three and a half inches wide. So you can see that there is lots of space inside the bag for a phone. You can carry your keys and perhaps even some treats for yourself. So whether you use one zip or two, it doesn't matter in this section here because with the bags on this side here, you'll open the zip out all the way only when you need to. Or if you've got extra sliders, you can section it off using just one zipper tape. And this one here is the long crossbody bag strap with the handmade handles. This one here is using the webbing that I like to use. I've made this one here so that it fits around the waist. So if you're going to use it for around the waist, make the length of the handle about one and a half times the whole uh, circumference of a person's body. That's probably a good safe measurement to have because then it's fully adjustable. You'll get some extra length for somebody that might be a bit bigger and you'll be able to close it up more for somebody that might be a little bit more petite. And I will show you how to wear this the third way. Rightio, here is the finished product and we've even got our uh, little tester coming along. You want to come inside so I can give you a treat? Come over here. Look what I've got. So we've got a perfectly functional crossbody bag. If you don't want to have the poo bags in there and the treats, then obviously you'll leave that out. Come back here. Coco, do you want a treat? Come. Good girl. Okay. Yum. She loves her treats. Good girl. Okay. Do you need to go busy? No? Best not to do that in the house, eh? <laughs> okay, off you go. Here. Go find Caesar. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> she just loves her treats. You can tell she's very chunky. Uh, and this one here is to wear around the waist. So if we take that one off for a sec, you can unclip it, wrap it around your waist, and you can just wear it as you know, a bum bag or just anything around your waist and do exactly the same thing. Have your bags coming out and your treats. The third option, and this is the reason why we put the swivels on the bag rather than on the um, handles. The third option is to remove the handle and then just clip it onto the keepers on your jeans. And you can put that anywhere around your body. Wherever you've got keepers, you can hang your bag. It's a very, very versatile bag in how you might actually like to wear it. Great for going for walks with your pooch. And you can really just fling it over your shoulder as a kind of a sling bag if you're desperate. So I've made this out of quilting cotton and I've also used stabilizer in this. I did forget, we not only have our little treats in the bag and our poo bags, but we do have a big pocket here which is perfect for your mobile phone, your chargers, anything like that. I, you're using my mobile phone at the moment, so I can't pop it in there. This is exactly the same size, pop it in there. There's more than enough room to stick your phone in there and, uh, and your keys, anything like that, that you might need to pop in your bag when you go for a walk. I've been wanting to make a new multifunction bag for taking dogs for a walk, having treats in there as well and having my phone. 
A lot of these ideas come about because I want them. I am important in my own mind, you know. I'm going to make a batch of these to sell. I'm going to use my upholstery fabric instead though. I want to bring my costs down. The time that I take to make something is the biggest cost expense that I have. So I'm going to make some of these up with the upholstery fabric instead of just regular quilting cotton because the cottons you have to stabilise to give them a little bit of body. With furnishing fabric or upholstery fabric, you don't have to stabilise those at much, if at all. So I'm going to make up a whole batch of these and start selling them in the shop as um, dog walking bags and done with upholstery fabric. And for the handles, all I'm going to use is the strapping that I usually use on all of my bags. Making the handles just take a little bit too long. I'm going to have to do a time trial on these. I think I'll probably sell them for about $40 each once they're made. I sell my little tiny puppy poo bags for $15. They're unlined and all they do is hold the rolls. So these ones have much more going for them. I'll try them at about $40 each and see how I go. I'll keep you posted in another video one day in the future when I've hopefully got lots of sales to report. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.